If you were in the market for a new car, SUV, or truck, I think deals are just around the corner with Nissan, and I think other manufacturers are soon to follow. More on that in a minute. This is actually big news, and I don't know why more people aren't talking about it. Nissan is giving dealers permission to advertise below invoice price from 10 to 15% on some vehicles. This is crazy. I'll also go over some dealer tactics to watch out for when you see this below invoice pricing. So let's get into it. A memo sent to dealers and obtained by Automotive News revealed that the automaker is allowing its dealers to discount its 2024 lineup by up to 10% below invoice. That's the entire lineup. Well, except for probably the GTR and the Z, those aren't gonna be discounted that much. The reasoning they wanna make room for the incoming 2025 models. And I thought the craziest part was they're actually discounting the Armada up to 15%. So look out for that if you're in the market for a full-sized SUV. Still has that reliable Endurance V8. So rather than Nissan taking on millions of dollars and having to come up with incentives and cash back, they're just pushing this all on the dealers and basically telling them, hey, lower your prices. And some dealers aren't too happy about it, understandably, but I don't really care. If I'm in the market for a new car, I don't care who's giving me the new deal. I don't care if it's the dealer, manufacturer, or both. I just want the best deal. These dealers have taken advantage of all these uh, consumers, so they have to take it a little bit. I don't really care. As you might know, uh, some of the larger dealers are actually looking at this in a positive way. Floor plan costs can eat into the dealer's budget, so being able to shift vehicles, meaning move inventory and make room for those 2025s, actually helps some of these larger dealers that have, in this case, one large retailer has an $80,000 in interest in their floor plan just in the month of April alone. That is crazy. With more than 200 unsold vehicles on the lot, which is what we've been seeing in even the videos I've been doing, right? You see these, these Nissan dealers, they're moving cars and they're actually selling cars. They still have too much stock. They're not underproducing like some of these other brands are holding back a little bit or having manufacturing problems. And interesting that this dealer says, we want more flexibility to make better deals and get more traffic in stores if I can get my floor plan expenses down by moving some of these cars, I'll do it. So if you're looking at monitoring this to see when these Nissan dealers really start dropping the price on the invoices of these vehicles, just do a quick search on Google Maps, find the center. So in my case, I just did a quick search on the entire front range of Colorado where I live. And I'm gonna try to find kind of this epicenter of, here, here I know there are five or six dealers in this area. That's where you're gonna find the biggest deal. And here's why Nissan's doing it. If you look here, new vehicle days supply in April is up. New vehicle inventory is up. And as a lot of you know, Nissan is up to 112 days uh, supply. So that's that's a huge number here. Pretty much any of these brands, you're talking Ford, Mazda, Mini. Nissan, I think, is the first domino to fall. I really do. And we're going to start seeing this play out with all of these brands as they start approaching that 100 days and the inventory keeps creeping up. Everyone's going to have to start doing this, and it's not without Preston. I'll talk about that in a minute. This has happened before. You can guess when, and we'll go over that here shortly. And of course, Lincoln and poor Stellantis and Infiniti, man, they are just struggling. When you look at Toyota, it says, uh, you know, 30 days supply, which I would say that's probably accurate given my Toyota dealers. However, I think the Tundra is a standout. Man, the same Tundras have been on my lot for months and they've got at least 25 tundras on my lot uh, so those aren't going anywhere anytime soon they're not selling nearly as well as they were before either that or they just produced a ton of them and, and they didn't anticipate having them stack up on lots watch out for those dealer tactics though there are some pretty kind of slimy ways they'll use this invoice pricing to try to hook people in let's go over those now so dealers are going to advertise the vehicles incorrectly for example uh, you might see like a Nissan Pro 4X, which is kind of their top of the line midsize truck, and they'll give you the invoice pricing for the S model on that truck. So they'll show one car with all the features and it looks great. And then in the fine print, it'll say, this is for the S model only, not shown in photo or something like that. So be careful of that. Another slimy tactic, they actually always do this, but they're going to push a lot harder for it when you're in there getting invoice or below invoice pricing. They are going to try to sell you extended warranties. They're going to try much harder to give you add-ons like tint and clear bras on the car, security systems, things like that. So you're going to have to pay a lot of attention to your line items on what they're getting you out the door for in this car. 
it'll also try to kind of make some more money in the financing area. So be careful, pay attention to interest rates and know your credit score going in. If you're going to do dealer finance financing or NMAC or one of the dealers, you need to know what your credit score is and, and maybe even get pre-approved before you go in there so you know that they can't really take you for a ride. And interestingly, look at the date on this article. This is from November 1st, 2007. So this has happened before. Right now we're gonna go through a little bit of this article and I wanna show you previous data. The market now is looking a lot like it did right before the great financial reset, right? The, the crisis of 2008. So for those of you who are old enough to know, this is what it used to be like in, in the late 2000s and, and maybe two, all, all the way through like 2014, 15. You could get a below invoice deal and that was kind of common. They say the dealer would typically hold that out for a special customer, close friend or relative. Today, it's common occurrence. That was back in 2007. And given market conditions, selling below invoice threatens to become even more prevalent. That was every manufacturer, it wasn't just one. Everybody thinks we're in a high interest rate scenario right now. We're really not. The problem is prices are way too high on vehicles and they extended loan terms out. So it's just the manufacturers and dealers are just maximizing um, and, and really stretching consumers to the limit, which is frustrating. If you look at this graph, you know, back in the 70s, we had 10% interest rates all the way up to 13% by 1979. And these are 48 month loan rates in the 80s. We were all the way up to 17% in 1982. And then the lowest it got was back down still above 10% and then back up to 12 by 1989. Then of course, in the 2000s, we started to drop down a little bit, got down to 6%. That was as low as it got there in 2004. And then back up in 2007 and then down in 2009 again to six and a half. So really comparatively, even through the 2000s for a 48 month loan, that's it's not anywhere near the rates we've been accustomed to. And now you look at this graph from 2010, this is where things got stupid and the economy just got, everybody lost their mind, uh, including the feds and lenders and everybody else. And everybody just has this expectation that, you know, this last decade is how it should be. And, and that's not, I don't think that's how things can operate long-term down in the fours. And then now we're creeping back up. We're still nowhere near what interest rates have traditionally been in the past. And then, of course, now in the 2020s, uh, here we are back up to almost 8% and everyone's freaking out and losing their minds. Of course, we have 60-month loans, 72-month loans. The number of people 90-plus days late on their auto loan payment has increased by 32% over the past decade from Q1 2014 to Q1 2024 and increased by 5.67% compared to previous quarter in, uh, that's quarter four in 2023. You can see the delinquencies back in, in 2009, you know, they shot up. That was the kind of the great financial crisis, the Lehman Brothers, all that stuff hit the fan. And then we had a huge long recovery after that. Now, look, we're... We're creeping back up. Even in 2020, that was the pandemic and job loss and all that. That kind of makes a little more sense. There's a reason behind it. But now we're creeping back up. And this is due to the prices are too high. People are overextended. They've got too much negative equity and they're not paying their loans and things are getting repoed. Then, of course, you have these age brackets and it is what you'd expect. You know, the the 18 to 29 year old folks are always, you know, going to be a lot higher um, delinquency rate on their loans. And then the next group is going to be 30 to 39 year old. But if you look at this, it's creeping back up the pretty much, you know, 18 to 40 year old people, man, uh, it's, it's shot up a ton since 2021, the delinquency rate on loans. So here's the auto loan interest rates from the nineties all the way to 2024. So traditionally, you know, they're still low. People just need to I think we need to hold the line, not buy cars at the price they're at. And, um, you know, these interest rates are fine if the cars are 20 to 30,000 less than they are and you're putting more money down, but that, that hasn't been the rule for the last 10 years. Average, you know, used car interest rates, um, they've kind of fluttered around the, you know, the 10 to now 16%. This is, you know, this is the world we live in. This is what it's going to be like, I think. And this graph is quite possibly the most disturbing to me because I'm just not a big fan of car loans. The auto debt has surged 84% over the past decade from $880 billion in Q1 of 2014 to $1.6 trillion in quarter one of 2024. This is just not going to end well. I really don't think this is going to end well. I don't know how we get out of this and 
uh, how folks are going to get out of the negative equity they have. But the upshot is all these manufacturers, Nissan is just the first in the row of dominoes that's going to fall. That's why I think all these manufacturers are going to have to start doing similar tactics. They're going to give better interest rates probably through their own financing. They're going to give uh, below, below or at invoice pricing. They're going to start giving more incentives out from the manufacturers and the dealers so that they can start moving this inventory. There is one rule that dominates everything and it is supply and demand. And if there's not enough demand to take these cars off the lot, which we're seeing the cars pile up, other than companies like Toyota and Honda, every other company is piling up with stock. We are going to see favorable a favorable buyer's market very soon. Could be starting in the next three weeks, two weeks, right before Memorial Day, July 4th, and then August, I think is when a lot of deals are gonna start hitting August through January. So if you're a buyer looking to buy a new car and you've got the money and you're financially stable, things are looking good. I'm, I'm happy to see it turning this way. Uh, let me know what you guys think. If this helped you out, please share it with somebody. That actually helps me more than anything. You just share this out and someone else watches it. That's, that's really all I can ask. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.